Breaking news, the Department of Homeland Security has just confirmed to CNN that federal law enforcement agents have raided properties owned by musician and producer Sean Diddy Combs. Since Diddy's ex-lover Cassie Ventura broke the internet with her damning lawsuit that alleged heinous crimes committed by the music mogul, his life has not been the same again. Diddy has been hit by lawsuit after lawsuit accusing him of similar crimes. They include multiple lawsuits involving allegations of sex workers, hidden cameras, and compromising recordings of celebrities and politicians. And now it seems that the feds have finally caught up with him after footage of Diddy's houses being raided surfaced. Is the truth finally going to be revealed? Let's find out. Diddy and the Feds. The Department of Homeland Security conducting a raid at a house in Holmby Field Hills, believed to be connected to Sean Combs, the rapper and music executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. It was a sunny Monday morning in the exclusive Holmby Hills area of Los Angeles when federal agents from Homeland Security Investigations made their move. Diddy's luxurious mansion, a symbol of his success and opulence, became the epicenter of a shocking raid that would send shockwaves through the entertainment industry. As the agents descended upon the property, the scene resembled something out of a Hollywood blockbuster. Heavily armed and determined, they swiftly made their way through the gates and into the sprawling estate. Boxes and bags were seen being carried out of the home, filled to the brim with potential evidence that could unravel the truth behind the sex trafficking allegations. The presence of federal agents in such a prestigious neighborhood did not go unnoticed. Onlookers gathered, their curiosity piqued by the spectacle unfolding before their eyes. News helicopters circled overhead, capturing every moment of this unprecedented event. Inside the mansion, the agents meticulously combed through every room searching for any trace of wrongdoing. They focused their attention on Diddy's phones and computers, knowing that these devices held the key to unlocking the truth. The urgency of their mission was palpable, as they were determined to seize these crucial pieces of evidence before Diddy could potentially tamper with or destroy them. As the raid continued, the tension in the air was thick. The agents moved with purpose, their faces masked by a steely determination. They knew the gravity of the situation and the impact their findings could have on Diddy's life and career. As the raid progressed, several individuals were seen leaving the house, their hands restrained by handcuffs. According to reporters, there is a huge likelihood that it was his sons, 30-year-old Justin and 25-year-old King, that were in handcuffs. And you can see what appears to be Diddy's two sons in handcuffs uh, in the yard. The raid on Diddy's Los Angeles home was a pivotal moment in this ongoing investigation. It marked the beginning of a journey into the dark underbelly of the entertainment industry, where power and influence can sometimes hide sinister secrets. The evidence collected during this raid would be crucial in determining the truth behind the sex trafficking allegations and potentially bringing justice to the victims. While the raid on Diddy's Los Angeles mansion was making headlines, federal agents were simultaneously executing a search warrant at his Miami residence. The stunning revelation that both of Diddy's homes were targeted in this sex trafficking probe sent shockwaves through the entertainment world. Breaking news out of Star Island. Several law enforcement agencies are raiding the home of hip-hop mogul P. Diddy. And tonight we are learning it may be tied to alarming allegations. Diddy's Miami home, a lavish retreat nestled in the heart of luxury became the next battleground for the federal agents. As they descended upon the property, the scene mirrored the intensity of the raid in Los Angeles. The air was thick with anticipation as the agents prepared to uncover any evidence that could shed light on the allegations against the music mogul. Just like in Los Angeles, boxes and bags were seen being carried out of the Miami home. The agents meticulously collected potential evidence, ensuring that no stone was left unturned. The gravity of the situation was palpable, as the agents knew that their final findings could have far-reaching consequences for Diddy and the victims involved. As news of the raid spread, the Miami neighborhood buzzed with speculation. Onlookers gathered outside the property, their curiosity piqued by the presence of federal agents. The media descended upon the scene, capturing every moment of this unfolding drama. The world watched as Diddy's empire seemed to crumble under the weight of these shocking allegations. Inside the Miami mansion, the agents methodically combed through every room, searching for any trace of illicit activities. They focused their attention on Diddy's phone and computers, recognizing the potential wealth of information that could be stored within these devices. The urgency of their mission was evident as they aimed to secure this crucial evidence before it could be tampered with or destroyed. The Miami Raid.
Cascade, much like its counterpart in Los Angeles, was a pivotal moment in this sex trafficking probe. It underscored the seriousness of the allegations against Diddy and the determination of the federal agents to uncover the truth. The evidence collected during this raid would be crucial in building a case against the music mogul and potentially bringing justice to the victims. But amidst the raids, one question is on everyone's minds. Where is Diddy? One of the many burning questions today is where is he? There were reports that Diddy had hopped onto his private jet and was on his way out of the United States. According to world star Hip Hop, the aircraft's trajectory indicates it is bound for Cape Verde, a country that lacks an extradition treaty with the U.S. However, his jet is currently in Antigua and Barbuda. Interestingly, TMZ obtained a video of Diddy pacing around Miami airport, meaning he may still be in the country. And now conspiracy theories have started surfacing and in particular regarding the raids and the jet's current location. According to right-wing political commentator Candace Owens, the raids were meant to cover up Diddy's crimes. According to her, Diddy is only the fall guy in a large scheme that involves multiple powerful people. The feds are currently raiding Diddy's house. They already knew what he was up to, but he is going to be the fall guy so that they can protect the people at the top of the ring. They are raiding his home to hide evidence not to find it. That's how this works. She posted on X. The latest lawsuit against Diddy seems to have opened a can of worms. So who filed the lawsuit and what damning information does it contain? We're back with new allegations of sexual harassment and assault against Sean Diddy Combs. Rodney Lil Rod Jones, a producer on Combs' latest album, filed a lawsuit Monday. He alleges that Combs sexually harassed and assaulted him while he lived at several of Combs' homes. The music industry was shaken to its core as former producer and videographer Rodney Lil Rod Jones filed a lawsuit against music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. In this shocking lawsuit, Jones accused Combs of sexual assault, harassment, and threats. The allegations made by Jones sent shockwaves through the industry, raising serious questions about the conduct of one of the most influential figures in the music world. According to the court documents, Jones worked closely with Combs, producing nine songs on his recent Love album from September 2022 to November 2023. During this time, Jones claims to have lived with Combs in various cities across the United States and even accompanied him on international vacations. However, what started as a dream opportunity quickly turned into a nightmare for Jones. In the 73-page lawsuit, Jones alleges that he witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer on the Love Album. These allegations paint a disturbing picture of a toxic work environment and a culture of abuse surrounding Combs. The lawsuit names not only Combs, but also several other individuals as defendants, including Combs' adult son, Justin, his chief of staff, Christina Corum, Universal Music Group CEO, Sir Lucian Grange, and former Motown Records CEO, Ethiopia Habtamarian. Jones claims that these individuals were aware of the misconduct and failed to take appropriate action. The allegations made by Jones are nothing short of shocking. According to the lawsuit, Jones alleges that he was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his ass by Combs. These acts of sexual harassment created a hostile work environment for Jones, who felt violated and powerless in the presence of his employer. Shockingly, Jones also claims that he was asked to work in Combs' bathroom, where the music executive would walk around naked and shower in a clear glass enclosure. This behavior made Jones feel uncomfortable and further contributed to the toxic environment he alleges existed. In addition to these incidents, Jones alleges that Combs showed him a recording of American DJ, record producer, and television personality Stevie J engaging in anal intercourse with a man. According to Jones, Combs used this recording as a way to manipulate and solicit him, suggesting that such behavior was common in the music industry. Diddy knew Jones looked up to and idolized Stevie J and used the recording as a way to solicit him. This is a normal practice in the music industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it, Combs reportedly told his then employee. These allegations paint a disturbing picture of a culture of exploitation and abuse within the music industry. Jones claims that he expressed his concerns about the inappropriate behavior to Combs chief of staff, Christina Corum, but his concerns were dismissed as friendly horseplay. Furthermore, Jones alleges that on Thanksgiving Day in 2022, he was sexually assaulted by the female cousin of Combs' then-girlfriend, Yung Miami, in the presence of Combs and his staff. These shocking allegations raise serious questions about the safety and well-being of individuals within Combs' inner circle. Jones also claims that Combs brought prostitutes into his Miami house and that on one occasion, he was drugged and possibly raped. Jones also alleges Combs forced him to engage in unwelcome acts with sex workers and that Combs and his staff engaged in, quote, serious illegal activity. In addition to the alleged use of various drugs, Jones claims to have footage of Diddy providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors and sex workers at his homes in California, New York, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Florida. This seems to have sparked off the recent raids on Diddy's homes. This isn't the first time someone close to Diddy has revealed that the music mogul used to spike girls' drinks. Former bad boy rapper,
rapper Mark Curry, who is the author of the revealing expose Dancing with the Devil, has also recently come forward with shocking allegations against Diddy. These allegations, which were left out of his book, paint a disturbing picture of a man who allegedly abused his power and mistreated those around him. In a series of clips posted on the YouTube channel Art of Dialogue, Mike Curry recounts his first-hand experiences with Diddy's disturbing behavior. Perhaps the most unsettling accusation made by Curry is that he witnessed Diddy spiking women's drinks. This drugging practice, according to Curry, was a common occurrence and was seen as part of the hip-hop culture at the time. The revelation is deeply disturbing as it suggests a culture of exploitation and disregard for the safety and consent of women. On them bottles right there, they've been to have something to make the girls be real, real slippery and all of this kind of stuff. But after a while, they all running, look, opening up their mouth like little birds. He's running around just popping pills in their mouth. These allegations, if proven true, reveal a deeply troubling pattern of behavior that goes beyond sexual harassment and enters the realm of criminal activity. As the lawsuit unfolds, the world is left grappling with the shocking details outlined by Rodney Lil Rod Jones. These allegations have sparked a much-needed conversation about power dynamics, consent, and accountability within the music industry. In a statement to the press, Sean Holly, Combs' lawyer, wrote, Lil Rod is nothing more than a liar who filed a $30 million lawsuit shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday. His reckless name dropping about events that are pure fiction and simply did not happen is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored. As Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our calls, we will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate action against those who make them. The Diddy saga is getting weird each passing day and interestingly has now dragged Michael Jackson's name into the mix. What exactly has been uncovered? The P. Diddy saga. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The cleanup guy, Mr. Fahim Muhammad, was also on the scene when Michael Jackson died. Recent details in the music world have placed Diddy's head of security at the scene of Michael Jackson's death. Although this may not ring any bells at first, looking back at Michael Jackson's last days and the details that his sister revealed about his death, it is easy to connect dots and certainly understand that there is more than meets the eye. Up until his death, Michael Jackson seemed like an isolated figure. It seemed as though he was going through the worst all on his own. Michael Jackson's sister, Latoya, revealed that Michael Jackson's death was not what the media wanted people to believe. Latoya has boldly asserted that her her brother was not only killed, but murdered for his billion dollar assets. Yes, you heard that right. According to LaToya, Michael's worth in music publishing assets, which exceeded a staggering billion dollars, made him a prime target for those seeking financial gain. In the months leading up to his untimely demise, Michael Jackson had been living in a state of fear and paranoia. According to his sister, LaToya Jackson, he believed that his life was in danger, with individuals conspiring to harm him and seize control of his billion dollar assets. In a shocking revelation, LaToya claimed that Michael had confided in her, expressing his concerns about people wanting to kill him for his music catalogs. How do you think he died? You've been quoted as saying you, you believe it may have been murder. Do you still think that? Absolutely. Why, Absolutely. Why are you I so sure? I would never, ever think differently. Because first of all, Michael told me that they were going to murder him. He was afraid. He was, was afraid for was his life. Who was going to murder him? the people that were involved in his life, the people that were controlling him. The investigation into Michael Jackson's death was a complex and painstaking process. The police, along with forensic experts, delved into every aspect of the case, determined to uncover the truth. LaToya Jackson, while refraining from naming specific individuals, believed that it was not the work of a lone perpetrator, but rather a conspiracy involving multiple people. If Michael was murdered, and we don't think just one person was involved. Rather, it was a conspiracy of people. I feel it was all about money. Michael was worth well over a billion in music publishing assets, and somebody killed him for that. He was worth more dead than alive, she said in an interview. The circumstances surrounding Jackson's sudden death raised immediate concerns. The Los Angeles Police Department and the Drug Enforcement Administration launched an investigation to uncover the truth. They delved into the singer's medical history, scrutinizing the doctors who had prescribed medications to him. The investigation revealed a disturbing pattern of prescription drug use by Jackson. It became apparent that he had developed a heavy addiction to drugs including propofol and oxycontin. These revelations shed light on the extent of his struggle with insomnia and the lengths he went to find relief. Conrad Murray, the man entrusted with Jackson's care, became the primary focus of the investigation. Questions arose regarding his role in the singer's death and the decisions he made regarding the administration of medications. The evidence pointed to Murray's negligence, leading to his eventual charge of involuntary manslaughter. Guilty. Murray was sentenced to four years in prison, a consequence that many believed was a small price to pay for the loss of a musical icon. However, 
he was released after serving only two years, leaving many to question the justice system's handling of the case. This actually made Latoya's claim that Conrad really was the fall guy, but revelations in 2024 have certainly increased speculation surrounding MJ's death and spawned many conspiracy theories. One man is at the center of everything. Enter Fahim Muhammad. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The cleanup guy, Mr. Fahi, Fahim Muhammad, was also on the scene when Michael Jackson died. So who exactly is Fahim Muhammad and how is he connected to both Michael Jackson and Diddy? Turns out Fahim Muhammad was Diddy's head of security and was key in helping him get away with his crimes. Fahim had deep connections within law enforcement and could make any problem disappear. In fact, the lawsuit filed by Lil Rod claims that Diddy instructed his employees to call Fahim anytime they were in trouble with the law and he could make their problems disappear. One of the most disturbing crimes that Lil Rod had witnessed that was covered up by Fahim involved a 2022 incident that occurred at Chalice Recording Studio in Hollywood while Diddy was hosting a writers and producers camp. Jones alleges Diddy, his son Justin, and Justin's friend G were in a heated conversation in the studio's bathroom when shots rang out. Jones claims the rapper and his son left the bathroom, but G was lying on the floor, holding his stomach and bleeding out of his legs slash hip area. Jones says he ran to help the man and sat him on the toilet while calling for others to get an ambulance. Photos in the lawsuit allegedly show G's blood on the studio's restroom floor and toilet stemming from from this incident, but when authorities later arrived, Jones says Diddy gave strict instructions to lie to them and say G was shot outside of the studio by a drive-by assailant. According to LAPD's investigation, the victim was shot outside the studio during a robbery and then ran into the studio, bleeding. However, Jones says he witnessed LAPD spend hours in the studio after the shooting, including in the bathroom, and make no arrests. Well, what is strange is that Fahim Mohammed was among the first people on the scene when Michael Jackson died. What is even stranger is the the fact that he was only 21 at the time and worked as MJ's head of security. Did Fahim, at 21, have the credentials to protect a pop star of Michael's caliber? What exactly were his qualifications at the time? Well, it turns out just one year before MJ's death, Fahim graduated from Sacramento State University with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Business Administration with a concentration in real estate and marketing. Why would a business graduate be in charge of the king of pop security? Something obviously seems fishy with the whole situation, but is it any wonder that Diddy got away with many crimes throughout his career? Diddy's woes began in late 2023 when Cassie Ventura filed a lawsuit against him and it has gone downhill for him since then. In a lawsuit made public today, Cassie says there was a pattern of control, drug use, and forced sexual encounters. In September 2023, singer Cassie, known professionally as Cassandra Ventura, filed a bombshell lawsuit against her ex-boyfriend, music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. The lawsuit, filed in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York, accused Diddy of rape, sex trafficking, and physical abuse. According to court documents, Cassie alleged that she was lured into an ostentatious, fast-paced, and drug-fueled lifestyle by Combs. What started as a professional relationship soon turned into a romantic one, with Combs exerting complete control over Cassie's life. The lawsuit claims those close to Diddy turned a blind eye to physical abuse. Beatings were witnessed by Mr. Combs' staff and employees, the suit read, but no one dared to speak up against their frightening and ferocious boss. Cassie said she never went to the police for fear of her abuser Diddy. In one instance of abuse in 2009, Diddy allegedly kicked her repeatedly in the face, making her bleed, and had his staff hide her in a hotel room. In response to the allegations, Combs vehemently denied Cassie's claims, calling them offensive and outrageous. He accused her of extortion, claiming that she has been demanding $30 million from him under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship. Combs categorically rejected her demands and viewed the lawsuit as a baseless attempt to tarnish his reputation. However, just one one day after filing the lawsuit, Cassie surprisingly settled with Diddy out of court. And just a day after music mogul Sean Diddy Combs was accused of sexual assault and years of abuse in a New York new lawsuit filed by R&B singer Cassie, word of a settlement overnight. But it seems Cassie's bold actions caused other women whom Diddy had abused to come forward with similar harrowing experiences. Sean Diddy Combs has been hit with another lawsuit just as he settles his first. This time, Joy Dickerson Neal claims she was was a victim of, of sexual assault by the musician in 1991. A spokesperson for Combs says the accusations are not credible and purely a money grab. In the first lawsuit filed against Sean Diddy Combs, Joy Dickerson Neal came forward with shocking allegations against the music mogul. According to the lawsuit, Dickerson Neal accuses Diddy of assault and battery, intentional infliction of emotional distress, sex trafficking, gender-motivated violence, and the making and dissemination of revenge. These claims paint a disturbing picture of the events that unfold 
unfolded in the early 1990s. In addition to Joy Dickerson Neal's allegations, another woman, identified as Jane Doe, has come forward with a deeply disturbing account of her encounter with Sean Diddy Combs. Jane Doe's lawsuit paints a horrifying picture of coercion, and sexual assault, implicating not only Diddy, but also singer Aaron Hall. According to the lawsuit, Jane Doe and a friend attended an MCA event where Diddy and Aaron Hall extended an invitation to an after-party. Little did they know that this invitation would lead to a nightmarish ordeal that would forever scar their lives. Upon arriving at Aaron Hall's apartment, Jane Doe alleges that Diddy coerced her into engaging in sexual acts against her will. However, the situation took a sinister turn when Aaron Hall forcefully entered the room, pinning her down and subjecting her the level of violence and disregard for consent displayed in these allegations is deeply disturbing, but the horror doesn't end there. In another room, Jane Doe claims that both Diddy and Aaron Hall forced her friend to engage in sexual acts as well. The trauma inflicted upon these women is unimaginable, leaving them with lifelong scars and emotional pain. One other lawsuit against Diddy alleges that the music mogul, along with former Bad Boy Entertainment president Harve Pierre, engaged in a heinous act of gang rape against another unnamed Jane Doe when she was just a 17-year-old high school student. The details of this lawsuit are truly shocking. According to court documents obtained by media outlets, the plaintiff, referred to as Jane Doe, claims that the incident occurred in 2003. She alleges that Harve Pierre approached her at a lounge in Michigan, claiming to be best friends with Diddy. To prove their relationship, Pierre called Diddy, and the woman alleges that both Pierre and Diddy convinced her to take a private jet to Daddy's House Recording Studio, which is owned and operated by Diddy himself. The lawsuit includes photos that Jane Doe claims were taken at the studio that night, including one where she is seen sitting on Diddy's lap. These images serve as evidence of her presence at the studio and raise questions about the nature of her relationship with Diddy and Pierre. According to the lawsuit, once at the studio, Diddy, Pierre, and an unidentified third assailant plied Jane Doe with drugs and alcohol. They then allegedly subjected her to a vicious and horrifying gang. The suit describes the incident as part of a sex trafficking scheme, with the defendants exploiting a vulnerable high school teenager and transporting her by private jet to New York City, where the assault took place. Where will the Diddy saga go from here? We can only wait and see.